Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Madam Shahza and I teach science for Form 1, Form 2 and Form 3 at Sekolah Menengah Science Tuan Kum Nawe. And today we are going to learn about Chapter 4, Reproduction, specifically on sexual and asexual reproduction. In Chapter 4, there are seven subtopics that we are going to learn. The subtopics are sexual and asexual reproduction, human reproductive system, menstrual cycle, fertilization and pregnancy, factors affecting the development of a fetus and a baby, infertility and contraception, and lastly, plant reproduction. Sexual and asexual reproduction. In this lesson, you should be able to compare and contrast sexual and asexual reproduction in animals and plants. You should also be able to reason the importances of reproduction. Do you know what reproduction is? Reproduction is the process by which new organisms or offspring are produced by existing individuals or parents to ensure that the species does not extinct. All living organisms have the ability to reproduce. Reproduction is a characteristic of life and is necessary for the propagation of life on Earth. There are two types of reproduction, namely sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is the production of offspring through the fusion of a male gamete, which is the sperm, and a female gamete, which is the ovum, to form a zygote. Sexual reproduction involves two parents of different sexes, a male and a female. Living organisms which carry out sexual reproduction include humans, all vertebrates such as the mammals, birds and fish, insects and flowering plants. Meanwhile, asexual reproduction is the reproductive process by a single organism only, without involving the reproductive cells. Asexual reproduction occurs when one parent produces offspring without involving gametes and fertilization. In asexual reproduction, large numbers of offspring can be produced quickly. Variation does not occur among the offspring. This type of reproduction is usually carried out by low-level animals and plants. Sexual reproduction involves two parents in different sexes, male and female. The male reproductive cells are called sperms, while the female reproductive cells are called the eggs or ovum. Sexual reproduction produces new generation that is different from its parent. During fertilization, the nuclei of the sperm and the egg fuses to form a zygote. The zygote develops into a new individual with different characteristics from the parents. Hence, the offspring shows genetic variation. The sexual reproduction involves the fusion of the nuclei of the male and the female gametes to form a zygote. This process is known as the fertilization. Fertilization can take place inside or outside of the body of the female organism. There are two types of fertilization, the internal fertilization and external fertilization. Internal fertilization occurs inside the body of the female. During mating, the male deposits his sperms into the female's body. This increases the chances of successful fertilization. Internal fertilization occurs in mammals, reptiles, birds and insects. External fertilization occurs outside the body of the female. Both sperms and eggs are released into the water simultaneously by the male and the female parents. After the sperm reaches the egg, fertilization then takes place in the water. External fertilization occurs in nearly all aquatic animals like fish and amphibians. Internal fertilization occurs in mammals, reptiles, birds and insects. 
Meanwhile, external fertilization occurs in nearly all aquatic animals like fish and amphibians. Asexual reproduction occurs when one parent produces offspring without involving gametes and fertilization. In asexual reproduction, large numbers of offspring can be produced quickly. The offspring produced have the same characteristics as the parent. In other words, these offspring are genetically identical to each other and to their parent. Variation does not occur among the offspring. There are several methods of asexual reproduction. They include binary fusion, budding, regeneration, spore formation, and vegetative reproduction. Binary fusion is a division of a mature parent cell into two identical cells. For example, amoeba, parmesium, and bacteria. Hydra and yeast reproduce by budding. The parent organism forms buds. The bud grows and eventually separates from the parent as a new individual. Regeneration means regrowth of a damaged or missing body parts. A new individual develops and grows from the part that has been detached from the parent. For example, the planaria, which is also known as the flatworms, starfish and spirogyra. Spores are very tiny and light. They are formed in the sporangia. Sporangia is covered by a hard protective layer. The mature sporangium was open to release mature spores. Once released, the spores germinate and become new individuals under suitable environmental condition. For example, mushrooms, mosses, and ferns. Vegetative reproduction is another type where new plants grow from the vegetative parts such as the roots, stems, or leaves of the parent plants. Birds grow out different vegetative parts of the parent plants. They eventually separate and grow into new plants. There are three major vegetative parts which are the leaves, the stems, and the roots. Carrots and sweet potatoes are the examples of root type in the vegetative reproduction. The stems can be divided into different types, the bulbs, the tubers which are the underground stems, and the runners. And lastly, bryophyllum and begonia are the examples of leaf type of the vegetative reproduction. Each organism has a specific lifespan and will die with age. The species will continue to exist as long as its members are able to reproduce. The failure of organisms to reproduce can lead to extinction. Reproduction is important because it ensures Reproduction is important because it ensures the survival and continuity of a species and helps in maintaining a balanced ecosystem. Every baby born is a gift from God. Persecution and abandonment of babies are very cruel acts and should not happen. We should be grateful for the ability to reproduce. Thank you for watching. See you again in our next lesson.